uh, the U.S. could remain the dominant power in, let's say, military power. There's no other country able to project military power globally like the Americans can. But uh, in economic power, uh, the world is multipolar. And in areas of transnational relations, there are many more actors. Whether it be transnational terrorism, or whether it be cyber relations, or whether it be global pandemics, uh, these are issues where uh, nobody is going to be able to accomplish it by themselves. And so we're going to have to develop these networks of cooperation if we're going to govern and manage these types of processes. And uh, I think that uh, it means that we're condemned uh, to uh, uh, cooperate because if we don't, we're really just condemned. I think the United States has got to adjust its foreign policy attitudes to realize that uh, we can't think just of power over other countries, we have to think of power with other countries. That many of the things that we want to accomplish can only be done with others, not just by uh, trying to have power over others. One thing is Chinese leaders have to be aware of what I call a two-audience problem. If you say that China will be first in artificial intelligence in 2030, as Xi Jinping has said, uh, that may play very well in Chinese politics, plays terribly in Washington. It means China is going to defeat the U.S. by 2030. So what sounds good in Beijing sounds terrible in Washington.